Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am V.me, and we are back again with another top three video. This time, we're doing top three tactics builds. Remember, tactics is the lower HP, supposedly higher damage build. This is the purple build, usually paired with ranged attacks, but now there's a few new melee weapons that are in the tactics tree. Tactics is also known for being glass cannon builds. So in the top three video, when we want win rates to be as high as possible, keep in mind that it doesn't take very many mistakes to throw an entire game when you're playing Tactics. As I said before, these are my own personal choices when it comes to winning a Tactics game. If you don't see one of your favorite builds here, feel free to mention it in the comments and I'll be sure to try to respond to it. This is also from a 4BC plus perspective. If you don't happen to have your forge fully unlocked, your power levels may be a bit lower than the kind we'd see in a 4BC and higher run. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. First of the top three tactics builds is definitely a crowd favorite. And that's the heavy crossbow. Now, heavy crossbow is usually paired with a survival build. And don't get me wrong, the survival heavy crossbow, the shoddy, is perfectly fine to be able to clear any monster and any boss. Personally, for me, I just enjoy the built for HP tactics version of the heavy crossbow. And what I mean by that is you're not playing a glass cannon heavy crossbow with tactics. You're playing a slightly tanky heavy crossbow build with support mutation and dead inside for bosses. Now, of course, what makes this work? Heavy crossbow is designed to be able to hook in enemies and then shoot them. When you get the shots pierced on the heavy crossbow, you can shoot into any crowd of monster that you like. Most monsters can't do anything about it. The amount of disruption that comes from a heavy crossbow and the coverage being able to hit things from your toe all the way up to your head makes the crossbow itself pretty much the only button you're gonna press until you find a real threat. All right, so after that grapple hook brings the monster close to you, all they're gonna do is stand in front of you and wait to be shot. So what you can do is spam your attack button on whatever group of monster you have. It could be a single target, it could be multi-target. You just stand there and unload that heavy shotgun clip. Chances are whatever in front of you can't really react to it. You'll even find that attacks will be completely interrupted from something like a rampager or something like failed experiment. Because of that, I'll usually only have a shield paired with this. If I'm lucky, I can find a legendary shield. That way I have bonus HP on the green and red scroll. If not, it doesn't really matter what shield I have. Could probably even use a green shield just to get that health up, even though you'll be losing damage on your parries. Now in terms of skills to pair with this, typically I will go with turrets. Again, I don't really want to position myself for things like a knife dance or things like a corrupted cloud. All I want is to be able to unload shots. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is with Wolf Trap and Crusher. Wolf Trap and Crusher are pretty good at killing Hand of the King and Timekeeper. Heavy Crossbow doesn't really have a lot of issues killing them but the amount of bullets you can get into them before they can react will completely change the flow of that boss fight. Now, because we're using turrets, as I said, we're gonna be taking support. Support mutation when you're using the shotgun allows you to have bonus damage on your shots. And that's something that survival can't do. When monsters already can't defend themselves against the crossbow, the only thing that will make the run even better is if they die even faster. That's why I like to pair support with the wolf trap and or the crusher. That way we're pumping out loads of damage that zombies have nightmares about. For the other two mutations, these are kind of down to personal choice. It is tactic, so you could probably still do the classic Gastro Disengage. Gastro lets you get a lot of your health back with just one piece of food. Disengagement is a little bit of error prevention. Just in case you get hit while you're not very tanky, you can at least 
use a health pot while you are invulnerable. If you don't do that, if you do want to try this built for HP heavy crossbow build, I'll typically go necro dead inside after the first boss. By then, I can kill every monster with heavy crossbow. And if I do get hit, I won't go down to 1 HP, and I'll be able to heal it back between the necro and the food. Also, because the heavy crossbow is so strong, you don't really have to upgrade it too many times. You can just find one that's around level 9 and sit on that for the rest of the game. When I get that level 9 shoddy, chances are my only gold is going towards resetting the affixes on my turrets or buying health pots. Once the pieces come together, I know not being fully glass cannon is a little weird to look at. Most of the time my stats are something around 7, 30, and 7 by the time I get to Timekeeper. If I were fighting Giant and I actually got the win, then my stats will be 7, 32, and 7 versus Anne the King. If you have anything less than 30, you can probably still win just because the heavy crossbow with Wolf Trap and Crusher so strong on its own. But anything less than 28 on Hand of the King is probably a misuse of stats. Don't forget to use that goal to reset your affixes. That way you get as close to 30-32 for Hand of the King as possible. Alright, the second tactics build. And this one I've actually played a lot recently. This one I like to call Save the Owl. And what this is, is a ranged build that's really designed to find the strongest owl you can and just keep it active for the whole game. Of course, you can do that with something like the Quick Bow. Of course, you can do that with the Marksman Bow. But I think my favorite versions are probably Ice Bow and Hokuto Bow. Now, the advantage that Ice Bow has is that you can fire one bullet into a crowd if there's multiple monsters, they'll probably all freeze. And then the owl itself should be killing everything. At this point, we'll be running Hunter's Instinct so that we can use owl as much as possible. Why I call this Protect the Owl is because the owl itself is the win condition. So long as you have an owl that does bonus damage to poison, bonus damage to bleeding, or bonus damage to fire, you can pair that with a turret and be able to kill bosses with no issue. We're using things like the Ice Bow because we want to make sure that our ambient damage coming from the Owl and the Flamethrower is doing its job. The only thing I have to do is make sure I don't get hit. Another way to do that is to run a shield. Shield, shield gives you the ability to fight against things like the Timekeeper that throws Shuriken at you. Whenever I'm running Owl, I'm probably not fighting Timekeeper. As we all know, Owl is really good at fighting the Giant. So I try to path for that as much as possible. The turrets are where your status effects are going to come from. Just about every turret in the 4 BC and higher range will be able to roll for poison clouds around it. So long as you find an owl that does bonus damage to that poison, you will find real damage coming out of this build. Typically, I don't even use the flamethrower and cleavers in biomes. I'm just killing everything with ice bow, owl, and hokuto. As far as mutations are concerned, there's a lot of options that you have here. We'll start with the defensive stuff first, the things to make sure that you don't throw this slightly glass cannon build. And that's gonna be between disengagement, emergency triage, and masochist. A lot of people will not take multiple purple mutations, so you could easily go disengage, triage, or masochist plus one purple mutation. That's perfectly fine to win the game. In that case, I'd probably use something like tranquility. That mutation is probably your best bet in terms of damage without needing to do a lot of work. Support is also pretty good. That does involve you being close to your turrets, but a lot of the boss arenas are designed to be able to fight on your turret anyway. At least Tranquilo will give you bonus damage for biomes, and then I can probably get Tranquilo to activate during a boss. Of course, if you want to go double purple mutations, that's perfectly fine. You can go Tranquilo with the Hunter's Instinct, you can go Tranquilo with Parting Gift, or you can do Parting Gift with Hunter's Instinct. It's all pretty good to do. Just don't forget that Hunter's Instinct and Parting Gift do nothing on bosses, so chances are you're gonna drop those anyway. 
As I said, the win condition here is between the owl and your turrets. So rather than taking the quick bow, rather than taking the marksman bow and trying to do that extra work, if I can just sit back and let my skills melt the monster, then it's so much easier than trying to position myself to land shots. When you're playing Protect the Owl, understandably the bosses themselves are probably the most difficult part of the entire run. Um, each individual boss is got its own power level in terms of fighting against the Owl plus Ice Bow or Owl and Hokuto. Uh, really, you want to try to go the route that makes the most sense to actually get these kills. Um, first boss, Concierge, easiest boss in the game. I mean, if you want to go that route, that is perfectly fine. Uh, you will probably win because Concierge can't do anything against the Owl. Um, if you don't go Concierge, I would probably go Conjunctivious instead of Mama Tick. And the reason why is that Mama Tick has that phase where it does upward attacks and that will possibly lead towards actually taking damage. Compared to Conjunctivious where you have a tentacle phase which works very well with the Ice Bow and then you just have to DPS her down during the off phases. And all that really is is chasing her down uh, with the Owl. Now for the second set of bosses I personally would recommend the giant over Timekeeper. Uh, I know it's a running meme that I only ever want to fight the giant anyway, but really I want to say that the owl is just a very good natural predator against the giant. Just having the owl target the hands while you're doing damage to the eyeball is something that not really any other items in the game can do. Timekeeper can potentially melt when you hit her with the Hokuto, stop her with the Ice Bow, and then use the Owl. But because of the amount of missiles coming out in the Timekeeper fight, there's a good chance you're going to lose your Owl, so you may as well just go into the Giant. Hand of the King, however, uh, obviously the strongest of all the bosses, is probably where you may find the most difficulty. Uh, don't forget that you are playing Tranquility with this build, so you really want to space yourself away from Hand of the King as much as possible. And that's not just for the damage bonus, what you're also getting, especially when you're using Ice Bow, is you're getting opportunities to read the attack that's coming. So at max range, you might see the grenades being thrown out. At max range, you may see him walking up to you to prepare to slash you. And those are the tells that you need to keep that owl up. Owl should be able to hit it from the opposite side of the arena. If not, then yeah, you will have to walk up while Hand of the King is slowed. But for the most part, as long as you can pump out damage with the right affixes by the time you get to Hand of the King, you just want to push that first phase as quickly as possible. All right, so lastly, top three tactics builds. I'm throwing in one that I've always wanted to throw in, but was kind of weary doing so because I wasn't sure how good the win rate's gonna be. But now that we're on bad seat, we have the opportunity to run a brand new item called the Smoke Bomb. So that build with the Smoke Bomb is Frantic Sword in 4BC+. Those who don't know, Frantic Sword will activate its crits when your Malay's bar is over half. What that means is that when you're playing Tactics, you can eat infected food to get your bar up and try to balance that between the hits you're taking too. So Frantic Sword with Gastro allows you to keep your HP pretty high while also maintaining Malay stacks. The smoke bomb is there because smoke bomb has damage reduction on it now. That way you can avoid a lot of the damage coming from bio monsters. And you can also cloak yourself for the chance to one shot elites. Of course this build can work without a smoke bomb. Maybe you go with a turret knife dance or a turret plus blast ring aura. But smoke bomb has an added benefit of being able to clear single monsters 
that you might be afraid of. Of course, because we're playing melee tactics, we're going to use one of the best tactics mutations in the game, and that's Predator. Predator with Frantic Sword is actually really good. Because you have potentially under 50% HP or potentially a lot of malaise, being able to go invisible in between monsters is basically where your survivability comes from. As I said, I want these top three builds to also have a higher win rate to it. So I wouldn't go initiative here. I wouldn't go with really any other tactics mutations except for Predator. The goal here is to be able to just pop monsters with Frantic. And if you can't, then you use Smoke Bomb. Once you get to the boss, you then have to actually use some skill to be able to actually kill the boss. Some people may go with a Hokuto bow in this case. That way you can kill the boss as soon as possible while the turret and the frantic is doing all the damage. Another option is to just take a shield. The only boss fight you really have to worry about with this build is Hand of the King, specifically because he has multi-hit attacks and he's a little unpredictable. Having a shield allows you some protection against the combo attacks that Hand of the King has compared to trying to land Hokuto Bow. And then the shield is also really good versus the true boss as well. For the Frantic Sword itself, to make sure that you're doing maximum damage, you really want to search for a Frantic Sword that does bonus damage to crit attacks. Having bonus damage to poison and bonus damage to bleeding is nice. If you can get it, then great. Your primary objective is to be able to one-tap normal monsters in biomes. And that critical hit will translate into boss fights as well. Obviously, once you get to Hand of the King, you're more than welcome to reset take off the Predator and put on Instincto. That way you can either spam your Smoke Bomb or spam your Flamethrower or spam your Knife Dance. And that may help you kill the Hand of the King a little easier than just relying on that turret. Now, of course, I don't have Owl recommended here. For those who don't know, Owl always attacks regardless of you being invisible. As soon as Owl hits a monster, your invisibility will break. So I don't like to take Owl anytime I'm planning to use Predator. All right, so that wraps up the top three for tactics. Again, these are my personal choices for relatively easy wins. If you don't have these unlocked, I highly suggest that you do so. But I don't want to say to not unlock other things. You're more than welcome to unlock every weapon in the game if you feel like it. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If there's a specific build you didn't see here, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you like how some of these builds sound and you want to see it in action, feel free to follow me at twitch.tv slash v.me. You might see me running some of these every now and then.